Quite excited this morning, I woke up and we've had some more snow, quite happy with that. And the UK being the UK, four or five inches and the whole place grinds to a halt. But I've decided, um, when the road's cleared a bit of course, travel down to my local nature reserve. It's called, what's it called Paula? Cromwell Bottom. Cromwell Bottom Nature Reserve. It's where we used I think. To, I think, yeah. This is where we used to walk our dog blessing when he was still alive. So I've just decided to come down. I've no idea why I've not been here with my camera before, but I really haven't. But there's lots and lots of things to photograph, including nature. So I'm quite excited about this video today, albeit it's going to be a real mixed bag. A real mixed bag. So let me just give you my thought process of what I'm hoping to achieve today. In answer, I don't really know, but just to give you an idea of where we are, to my right hand side we've got a nature reserve and to my left hand side we've got a river. So I'll probably end up photographing a bit of nature, I'm not really sure. There's snow on the trees but as you can see there's not a great deal left anymore, so I don't really know about landscape photography. but. My primary objective is to walk around and just shoot handheld, whatever I see, don't care what it is, whether it's abstract or whether it's nature. But in my bag, I do have my tripod just in case I see something that's worth getting my tripod out for. And I've also got my 1 to 400 mm lens in my bag as well, just in case we happen to see something quite exquisite when we go out into the lake area. This vlog's taking a bit of a turn. Unfortunately, the snow has started to melt um, quite quickly as well, because of the rain, probably. <sighs> Wandering around, struggling to find things to photograph. It's looking a bit messy. You know what it's like when the snow starts to, to melt and it doesn't look particularly nice. It looks dirty. Well, it's like that. I went down onto the lake at the center of the nature reserve and it's partly frozen over and there was no birds, nothing. So I'm here armed with my one to 400mm lens, struggling to find things to photograph, which is really, really frustrating. But like a true boy scout, I've got plan B. I remembered from the many walks I've had around this area with Scooby. Uh, it's literally five minutes away from the studio, so every lunchtime we used to come down here and go for a wander around because it's beautiful. And I remember there being a fantastic bird viewing area, which is where we're currently at at the moment. So as a backup plan from today, I knew that if there was nothing to photograph, then at least we could spend maybe 10 minutes down at the bird viewing area, bird hide area, bird feeding area, call it what you want. And grab maybe a couple of shots. Let's just stop for 10 minutes and have a cup of coffee, we thought. Two hours later, I'm still here. If you've never done this before, well, we're in lockdown at the moment. If you can get out and about with your camera to exercise, I believe that you know you can do that legally, then why not stop off for five minutes at a place like this? It's great on so many different accounts, it's brilliant. It's good because um, we're feeding the birds. It's good because you're out and about with your camera. It's good because of the exercise. If you've never done this type of photography before, then it couldn't just be a step into a new genre of photography for yourself. Trust me, when you come here or to a place like this and start taking pictures of these birds. I'm taking pictures of birds, by the way. I don't even know what they are. As far as I'm concerned, there's green ones, there's gray ones and there's black ones. And I've seen a gray squirrel. That's about as much as I can tell you. But photography, cameras, I can tell you. That's the wife, by the way, there. She's even nicked me camera. Yeah. 
So as a complete turn of events, let me talk you through how I go about taking pictures like this. My camera setup, uh, how I look for compositions, and basically how I set the scene up to try and make it look as natural as possible. Well, let's start off right at the very beginning. Let's talk about uh, how I go about attracting birds to a certain area. First of all, I'm going to sit down with my camera to my eye and I'm going to look around for compositions. I want something that looks fairly natural. I don't want to come to a place like this and start taking pictures of birds on a bird table because otherwise, well, A, you could do that in the garden and B, well, it's okay, but I suppose the idea is you want to try and make it look as natural as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and isolate something like maybe a stick pointing up. Just watch the habit of the birds watch how they go about looking for food and if there's a particular place where they land and it looks really cool it looks natural as long as you've got plenty of separation between the bird and the background then hey presto that's fine next without stating the obvious go out drop a few seeds down but try your best to make the seeds hidden from the camera so in other words if i've got a plateau here don't put the seeds along the front put the seeds along the back and even what I also did was I grabbed a bit of snow and I placed a bit of snow at the front. So hopefully it will disguise the fact that the birds sat there eating the seeds that we've laid down for the bird to eat. Let's talk about our camera settings. Especially if you're new to photography, or even if you're not, it's still a tried and tested way anyway. But set your camera to shutter speed priority. That's S or TV on your dial. And all that'll happen then is you'll simply be in control of your shutter speed. Now, as far as I'm concerned here, we're not photographing birds in flight, so therefore, Anything around about 250th or 500th of a second is probably a good ballpark figure. At the end of the day, we're just going to focus on a perched area, wait for a bird to land, take a picture, and then the bird will fly away. We're not really trying to capture birds in flight here at the moment. One tip I will give you, though, if you do shoot in what's called a semi-automatic mode, which in this instance is shutter speed priority, then just make sure your ISO is set to auto. That is really, really important. Okay, so all you've got to think about is pointing and shooting your camera. 250th, maybe 500th of a second. If there's plenty of light, then go higher. It's not really a problem. Obviously, it'll depend uh, greatly on the lens that you've got on your camera anyway. So that's tip number one. Shoot using shutter speed priority. There's a slightly more advanced method of shooting, and that is simply to shoot in manual. Of course, you could shoot in aperture priority, yes you can, but um, I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you're new to photography. You know, if you know exactly what you're doing, then of course shoot in aperture priority if you're comfortable doing that. But the other recommendation I would suggest is to shoot in manual, but shoot in manual in a slightly semi-automatic way. Set your camera to manual, but what's important is the aperture. We need to make sure that all of the bird is in focus. So to do that, rather than use a very tight aperture, a very shallow depth of field, let's give ourselves a sporting chance of getting that eye and maybe the rest of the bird in focus. So I would suggest setting your camera to f Eight. So f8 is probably a ballpark figure, but it'll be good enough to capture certainly um, a bird's head and maybe half a body in. Obviously, again, it will depend greatly on the lens that you'll have attached to your camera. So that's the first thing. Set your aperture to f8. Next is set your shutter speed again to anything between 250th to 500th of a second. And then to make life easy for yourself, simply switch your ISO to auto. So that becomes 
a more advanced semi-automatic mode. <laughs> oh. Oh. And don't fanny around, just shoot them off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> do you know what's really strange? I'm talking to the camera about wildlife photography wearing my camouflaged jacket knot. <laughs> so you can tell I haven't exactly come prepared to take wildlife pictures. But then again, it doesn't matter when you come to a place like this because you're behind a screen, you're shooting through slits, and at the end of the day, the birds. They're probably used to being fed here by humans anyway, so it doesn't doesn't really matter. So this is this is a fun video. It's about hey, what can we do now while we're in lockdown? While we have a bit of exercise, out and about, go for a walk, and just come here and feed the birds. Great for the birds, great for you, great for your soul, great for your mind, great for your photography as well. Let's very quickly talk about the lens. I've got a full frame camera and a one to 400 mil lens on there. Basically any camera will do, but when you come to a place like this, if you own a long lens, try and use your longest lens. That's all I would suggest. The idea is to try and fill as much of the frame as you possibly can with the actual bird itself. Um, of course, that's not, that's not, a strict given that's not a law you don't have to fill the frame with the bird sometimes it's good to story tell if the bird is perched on a nice looking perch then of course we can zoom out and tell the story of the bird perched on a nice looking perch obviously photography is all about storytelling Next, let's talk about focusing. Well, again, if you're new to photography, you might need to go into your menu for this or look it up online. But when you depress your fire button halfway down, several dots will appear. Those dots that will appear are hunting for a subject to focus on. And what you want to try and do is to restrict those dots down to a single dot, a single dot, so a single point of focus that's my recommendation to you that way you can put that single point of focus right on the bird's eye and when you depress your fire button halfway down that focus point hopefully will be right on the bird's eye other great tips for you one is stop chimping don't chimp we call it chimping in the industry when you take a picture and you look at the back of your camera when you take a picture and you look at the back of your camera you're going to have lots of pictures that you're going to throw away so don't waste your time while you're wasting your time looking at the back of your camera you're not taking pictures and you're here to take pictures. So if you take 100 pictures, 500 or 1000 pictures, ultimately you're only looking for probably your best five pictures to showcase on your website, social media, or to share with your friends. So don't waste your time taking pictures, looking at the back of your camera, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, look around, he's in focus, he's not in focus, it's blurred, it's not blurred. Take a couple of test shots, 
when you first start taking pictures. After that, it's almost like tape the damn thing up. Tape it up and just concentrate on taking pictures. Trust me, even myself as a working professional, when I shoot stuff like this, there's gonna be so many pictures that I'm gonna to have to throw away, so many. I'm trying to focus on a very tight um, or position of the animal. I'm, tr I'm trying to focus on a bird's eye. The bird's head is moving around and sometimes you'll start to take a shot and the bird will fly away. You're gonna get lots of that, so don't worry about it. But over a course of 10 minutes, or an hour of you here taking pictures, you're gonna get so many fantastic shots and you don't have to worry about all the crap ones that you end up taking. We all take crap pictures, you know. Oh, not the camera. Yes, please. <laughs> Paul has just said as well that <laughs> if I'm showing any nice pictures at the end of this video, they'll be hers and not mine because I'm talking so much and she's the one with the camera as in right now and she's taking pictures i tell you what though she's loving this she's loving this so what i would suggest you do is pre-focus on a particular area so like a perch for instance something that you're comfortable with the composition and then just wait for the bird to come to you rather than chase the bird everywhere just do it slowly like now like now perfect just take your time no sudden movements and I suppose the key to it really is just not to hunt for the birds because at the moment my composition is perfect on a certain perch if I now move across to here or move across to here the chances are the composition won't look very nice I might not have the separation the background might look a bit messy so at the moment I've literally got two perches I'm keeping my eye on and I'm just waiting for the bird or birds to land on either B or A. And then I'm just simply taking, 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 taking. That's all I'm doing. And I'm just chilling out. Oh, this is so good. I tell you what, Morton Hilmer, eat your heart out. It's always great when you're out and about with your camera because you tend to meet lots of nice like-minded people well i've just met a guy who took an interest in what i was doing and he actually introduced himself he runs a very popular facebook group called british bird watching i'll leave a link below so ordinarily i would ask you that if you came out and about and if you were to do what i'm doing now i'd i'd suggest that you post your pictures to my facebook group but of course if you're into this probably more than i am then um i suggest you join his group if you're not already a member and uh, and post your pictures there as well that's the british bird watching very popular facebook group and a very nice guy that runs it as well i'll leave a link in the description oh well that's it i can't begin to explain to tell you how much i've really enjoyed that today's been fantastic honestly when i set out this morning i didn't set out to become an ornithologist or a twitcher or a bird photographer but it was plan b and since we put plan b into action i can't begin to explain how much i've thoroughly enjoyed it i didn't mean for this to be a tutorial but i just thought while i was taking pictures if i'm enjoying it then maybe some of you guys would as well 
Right, well that's it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll show you the pictures that I captured today, or certainly half a dozen of them anyway. And do me a favor, help support the channel, give it a thumbs up, and if you think the content is worthy of it, then subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Apparently I've got to say you've got to hit the bell as well. Catch you on the next one guys, cheers. Turn the film. Look for a perch, pre-focus on that perch, and then just stay still and wait until the subject lands on the perch yeah. because I'm talking to camera. <laughs> it's hard work, isn't it? That's me, Mrs. G. <laughs> <laughs>